the reason that we are here talking with you is because you've summoned us, but we are not here to try to get you to change what you're asking for. We just want you to understand the process. We just want you to understand the valid platform on which you stand and the perfection of this environment as it exists. We just want you to understand that everything is working out just the way we all knew it would. And that as the contrast inspires you to the new request, that future generations will benefit by the new requests that you are putting there. In other words, every new generation benefits by what the generation before struggled with. You acknowledge that. We just want you to understand that you don't have to croak or be the new generation in order to experience the benefit. You get to ask and you get to be the receiver of what you've been asking for, but you gotta understand how this game is played. You've got to understand the laws of the universe. You've got to understand the two vibrational aspects of you. You've got to be willing to move in the direction of what you want and no longer continue to beat the drum of what caused you to ask for it to begin with. In other words, when you are struggling with money, you're asking all day, all day, all day, all day, all day, all day for more money. But as you continue to beat the drum of, I don't have enough and it's not fair that he's got too much and somebody should do something about it and it's not being evenly proportioned and there are too many people that are taking too big of a slice of the pie and there are not enough of us getting enough pieces of the pie. As you are beating those drums, you are depriving yourself of the vibrational attitude that is necessary for you to get what you've been asking for. So your fortune just keeps amassing. We've been calling this your vibrational reality. We've been calling it your vibrational escrow, your vibrational fortune. And it's not just a vibrational fortune. It's a real fortune that will manifest. Your fortune is being held for you in this vibrational bank, so to speak, and nobody has access to it but you. Nobody can get in there and take your escrow. But you know what happens with so many of you? You don't get in there and receive it either. You stand on the outside of it and complain about not having it when you're the only one who can get in there where it is. And we want you to understand that this in there where it is, is this vibrational escrow. It's a vibrational reality. And we're going to call it the vortex, the vortex of well-being that you have created for yourself. You put some of it there before you were even born into this body. You've put much of it there since you got there. And everything that life has caused you to ask for is there not just waiting for you. It's there with law of attractions response to it. Each and every request that you put there, law of attraction is responding to. And there is a veritable vortex. And we are emphasizing the vortex because we want you to feel the magnetic quality of it. We want you to understand that when you ask for something, everything that is necessary for the fulfillment of this that you have asked for is being summoned to it all cooperative components. So when you ask for a lover, a lover of a certain stature, a lover of a certain look, a lover of a certain attitude, a lover of a certain financial condition, a lover of a certain love, a lover, when you ask for a lover, that lover is there, has been summoned to this vortex, and it is there, all cooperative components have been summoned. The question that this workshop wants to ask and help you answer is, are you a cooperative component? Are you cooperative enough that you are being drawn into your own vortex where all your lovers are, where your money is, where your answers are, where your clarity is, where your vitality is, where all that you have become vibrationally is? Or are you an Henri holdout? <laughs> Beating the drum of, I've been asking so long and it never comes to me and I'm getting tired of looking and all the good ones are taken and it's really not fair and my friend has a lover and she isn't worthy of the lover that she's got. <laughs> she doesn't treat him right and yet there they are together and I would be such a wonderful lover but I don't have a lover, 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 I don't have a lover. And we say, yes, you do. You've got a lover, it's done. You got a lover, you're just not where your lover is. Your lover's over there in love. Your lover's <laughs> over there, your lover's over there with all the other cooperative components. Your lover, your lover will wait forever for you 
Because the universe has the ability to keep putting a new lover in the place till you get ready, a new lover in the place. Well, that one went. Well, a new lover in the place. Well, that one went. A new lover in the place. Well, a steady stream of lovers is making their way to your vortex on the rare occasion that you might get in the vortex, you see. <laughs> But you gotta wanna be in there. You gotta wanna be in there more than anything else. You gotta wanna be in there more than complaining. You gotta wanna be in there more than validating. You, wanna, you gotta wanna be in there more than being right. Because often you are so right about the wrongness that you are focused upon. You are so right. You've got evidence, you've got emails. You have other bloggers. You have evidence of the wrongdoing that you are using as your justification not to go in the vortex. You join online chat groups. Those who are not going in the vortex and are validating their reason for not going. That's what most of those online chat groups are. So we think we made that point very well. Sometimes Oh, you're doing so well. Sometimes you'll be all tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and you'll be going with the flow. And we mean that literally you're going with the flow and you feel very decisive about something. You see something that you want and you know, mm, that's it right there. Yes. You're decisive. But sometimes as humans who've been trained to not believe in yourselves, you think Oh, but it shouldn't be that easy. I shouldn't be led to the perfect thing right here and now. Surely there must be more pain to experience in the earning of the perfect whatever it is. And so sometimes, even though you were led right to it, because the source within you knew right where it was, and you were tuned in, tapped in, turned on. And so you went to right where it was. And when you saw it, you knew it, but then you second guessed yourself because it was not nearly painful enough coming to the conclusion. <laughs> and we want you to begin to realize that it's not supposed to be painful, that there is a process of you coming to those decisions. There is a process by which you sift and sort and come to your decisions. You know when you don't prefer something and you know when you do prefer something. You know, you know, you do, you know. But sometimes along your unfolding of your path, others have convinced you that you just think you know, but you don't really know. And that they are really the ones who know. And so you should listen to them because they know. And often they will accuse you and us they accuse us of teaching you selfishness. We say, we do. Yes, we do. We do. Chapter one, selfishness. <laughs> because if you are not selfish enough to identify your own preference, then you cannot connect to the power that is really you. Because in not deciding what's best for you, then you water it all down with what's best for this and best for this. And we're not saying that it cannot be best for you and others too. We are saying that what is best for you, which is alignment is what's best for everyone who has anything to do with you. Because when you are in alignment with the source within you, you have plenty to give. Oh, then you're flowing, you're dynamic, you're fun. But if you're not selfish enough to get tuned into that, then you're not so much fun. And then that's when we love you so much. That's when you get demanding. That's when you start demanding the respect that you want. There is some energy and resistance in that desires are born out of it. And it's the reason that you decided to come forth and be physical because you wanted the benefit of the contrast that would parlay you into expansion. And once you've expanded, then uh, of course, there will always be a little tension between what life has just caused you to become and what you're able to catch up with. But we want to say to you that we think you're trying way too hard in all of this. We want you to just sort of relax a little bit 
The thing that we've been saying to a lot of people, and we're just going to give it to you full on here, is that there are three steps to the process. Step one is taken care of. You've asked. Step two is taken care of. Source is responding. Step three is your work, which means chill out. <laughs> step three. Step three is be easy. We could not write a book that says this is always the right path for everyone. It's just from where you are, just reach for something that feels a little better than where you are. So for example, you say something like, I'm doing pretty good, but I know I could do better. A little upstream. I'm doing pretty good. More downstream. I'm doing pretty good and understanding more all the time. More downstream. I'm doing pretty good. In fact, I'm feeling really good about what I'm doing. More downstream. I'm eager to figure this out more of the time, more downstream. I'm getting so I know what to do all the time, even more downstream. I like being more in charge of my life, even more downstream. This just gets easier and easier, even more downstream. I'm not sure I'm meditating quite right, more upstream. Yeah. Well, I'm doing all right. I don't have to figure it out all right now, more downstream. I love these processes that Abraham has been giving us more downstream. Oh, there's so many processes that Abraham's been giving us more upstream. I'm not sure I'm doing this process right more upstream. This process really helps me more downstream. I like this process the best of all more downstream. I have no idea why they offered this process more upstream. This process is probably good for some people more downstream. I like to pick and choose those that are best for me more downstream feels good that there's so many things to choose from more downstream. I'm realizing that there's no right or wrong way to do anything more downstream. I'm realizing that it's just my job to soothe myself into alignment more downstream. I'm starting to feel that my source within me is always aware of me and calling me downstream. I'm really getting it how I can hook into that more downstream. I can feel when I'm leaning that way and I can feel when I'm leaning the other way. This is really good. I've come into conscious awareness of my guidance. I actually can tell and I'm enjoying the subtleness of it. I'm enjoying how I'm getting so that I can feel it. This is really fun. I'm starting to understand I can't get it wrong because I'm never done. So wherever I'm standing, I can just lean more downstream. I can just make myself feel better or not. It's all up to me. I'm doing pretty good. I'm glad I attracted this. I'm glad I know what I know. I know that it will come to me through lots of different avenues. Everything around me is actualizing to show me what my vibration is. I got all these indicators, these lovely indicators, emotional indicators, manifestational indicators. I'm doing so good. I love being alive. I'm glad I came. I like being in this environment. I like the variety. I like picking and choosing. I like tuning in. I like being who I am. I like the idea of what's coming. I like what's come. I'm happy where I am. I'm eager for what's coming. I'm happy where I am. I'm eager for what's coming. I'm happy where I am. I'm eager for what's coming. I'm happy where I am. I'm eager for what's coming. I'm happy happy where I am. I'm eager for what's coming. It's just perfect.